so I am Sua Lee and I'm speaking to you from the virtual Benedetti sessions. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here um, in this very difficult time of lockdown where everyone's stuck in their own homes um, so it feels very special to be able to reach you in um, various different corners of the world um, for this um, and for for those of you who don't really yet know what this is all about, um, we're 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 producing these virtual sessions over instead of over a weekend, we're actually spreading it out over a period of three whole weeks. So what we're doing is we're working towards a final weekend at the end of May, um, and that weekend is just going to be packed full of all your goodness that's going to come from you, as a result of us all working together over these next three weeks. And um, yeah, th those. So during this next three weeks, we're we're. This is today for me is the first of a series of tutorials, and um, that um, and I'm going to be working with the cellos of the advanced orchestra, and um, the program is um, uh, the the Fantasia on a theme of Thomas Tallis by Vaughan Williams, and also um, the um, Paganini's Twenty Fourth Caprice, which is a real. Um, real treat um, arranged by the Irebe sisters so um, it's really exciting I'm, I'm so thrilled so um, today what is happening is I'm just going to focus today on working through um, at least starting you all off on um, the Vaughan Williams which is the Fantasian theme of Thomas Tallis and since this is day one I don't know if how much you know yet of the piece but um, Thomas Tallis was a, um, a composer born in the early 1500s um, and I, I believe he wrote the, the, the theme that, um, that we're using in about 1563, I've read. So um, the composer then skipped forward a couple of hundred years, maybe 300, more than 300 years, to Vaughan Williams who wrote this piece in 1910. Um, using the theme of Tom Thomas Tallis from the 16th century. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful hymn tune. Um, so we're going to be um, working through this. Um, and um, yeah, we'll get, st I'll just get started. Um, now, I hope that ma many, in fact, I hope that all of you will have already um, checked out the warm ups. Um, which it's lower down on the website you'll be able to s click on all the various warm-ups that happen um, and these warm-ups just get you ready to, to actually play and they only take a couple of minutes and they're definitely well worth doing um, because essentially we really do need to warm up every single part of our body to be able to play um, so let's take it as read that you've done this and we'll crack straight into um, um, the Vaughan Williams um, now, one of the things I'd like to really um, hone in on today is the elements of playing together in an orchestra. And, um, and in this case, I guess it's string orchestra, but it's really important for me um, to think about the elements of making chamber music together. So um, we'll, we'll have an amazing conductor. Karina Kanalakis, um, I'm thrilled you're going to be working with her. She's wonderful. I've worked with her before um, with the uh, Scottish Chamber Orchestra. She came to us and she really is fabulous. So this is exciting. And um, the thing about conductors is essentially, of course, they don't, you know, people say to me, does it really make a difference? Do conductors make a difference? And it's a, an age old question of, yeah, well, uh, Yes, actually they do. Um, it's not just about beating time, it's about um, providing um, a scene, you know, it, and, and, um, and colouring a picture, and there's so much um, inspiration that one can get from your conductor. Um, um, there's so many things, in fact. And um, the other thing I, I strongly feel is the sense of breathing with your conductor. So. The conductor will breathe and you and you as a musician around will breathe with her so um, number one um, it's about having that sense of pulse and moving together so always looking looking towards her um, for inspiration and for guidance and time 
um, and especially I find it especially difficult in um, slower music um, to to make sure that um, that you stay together as a group. Um, and the other thing I wanted to just talk about briefly before we do <laughs> actually play a note is just the sense of listening. So the con like playing chamber music involves listening and following. So it's it's a very very um, tied up um, but listening and following basically happens together you just sometimes listen a bit more you follow a bit more sometimes so um, I'd like you to consciously and constantly think about whether whether or not you're you're um, you need to lead or to follow but always listening so um, at the beginning of this um, There'll be a nice big upbeat from Karina and um, I'd love us all to take that breath with her as she breathes in and then when you when you breathe in together and you, you get a sense of that breath and finding when you come in together at the bottom of that beat so um, I'm just uh, unfortunately I can't sort of play and conduct at the same time so I'm just going to call out the beats um, so for now, just the sense of um, starting at the like at the point point of contact to, to where she bounces her beat. That's where we want to play, just right there. And then the beats will feel very long, but in fact, there's only one. T like if you're really listening to everyone around, hopefully we will all move and arrive at every beat in exactly the same time. There's also um, for us coming up. There's um, uh, ha um, half beats like the subdivisions but we'll come to that okay just starting then so really concentrating on um, nice light uh, light bows just bounce your bow for me before you start just feel between the, the, the pinky and the first finger and the thumb just feel the weight of the bow and then when it feels nicely balanced and you've got the whole tip feeling either light and heavy you've got the, the the balance point then we're going to start ready to start three four Two, and okay so those are the first few notes now I don't know if you noticed but I didn't use very much vibrato and there's a reason for that because in, in back th this music is choral music, so it's hymn music, and it's there's something very pure about it. So I'm I there's only a little bit of a little bit of warming up, but it's quite still. Okay, and the other thing um, to to mention is that you're really not putting all your weight into the bow so not, not we're not looking for a really thick sound uh, we're looking for just a floaty just keep the bow and always in the center of each pulse and when we start in the three four, um, it's e we're moving from four four three four. The uh, the quavers, which are the eighth notes, they continue in exactly the same speed. So three and four and, and it's important for us cellists at this point to really start subdividing, um, and making sure that the um, subdivisions in one's body feels quite um, solid and heavy even though that what we're producing is quite light because um, with these pitzes that come up mm, we want them to be absolutely in time um, there's there's an inevitability great net great word isn't it inevitability about when they're going to come they don't come too early nor too late um, the other thing about those pits is, is um, they are a molto pesante, which means very heavy, even though they're piano quiet. I would um, just um, anchor your thumb when you want to have a good steady rhythm, anchor your thumb. It just means you've got 
some purchase on it and your timing is you're not you're not um, having to be approximate about when you hit the string so this anchor here is nice for rhythmic you can come off in the rest but yeah so just that just helps you keep the pulse um, uh, what else um, the other thing that's quite happens a lot in this piece um, is this sense of bow um, articulation comes quite a lot um, in the theme so um, uh, I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail because I will work with you in a in a, in a zoom um, sectional so we can go over more particular things for working through the actual piece but just Hi, I'm highlighting some little things um, to think about. This bow, bow, um, bow articulation is just, if you look um, after the a tempo, um, where we get the theme, I'm just looking for a letter, after A, one, two, three, four, five, five, five after A, we get the theme. And this is the hymn theme. <laughs> already there's two bow articulations that happen quite a lot and it's this particular thing when uh, there's two quavers two eighths in a row I don't know if you noticed but what I was doing was I was the bow doesn't stop but I'm uh, just articulating a little with um, a little bit of weight you barely see it but I'm feeling I'm just pointing it out in time there so I'm not coming out of the string it's basically on the almost on the string and the bow keeps moving as well so it's it, if I didn't do the articulation in the bow it would sound like this just sound like a long note but with the bow articulation it sounds like this you hear the difference a bit more exaggeration but in this case I want it to be as smooth as possible and again here two and three always subdivide another bow gesture but Let's do that um, on an E, on a D. Let's just try. too much if that makes sense so that that's such a useful thing where you don't want to go so it gives a lot more lift very useful indeed okay so th another thing that um, there's a few thing times it happens in this in the Vaughan Williams is this these chords and I just like to um, speak a bit about how to approach these chords there's it comes in the very first big climax that we have after C um, there's a big climax up to a big three note chord and what we don't want to do is that is 
use so much bow in the chord. It should last a whole bar. <laughs> If you don't if you don't save the bow, you're going to run out of um, run out of steam, and what a shame at the climax. I've, I've got nothing left to give, so we're going to try and get through that three note chord as low down in the bow as possible. So make the spread and slow the bow. So this and unlike the beginning when we were floating, this time you want to sink in and keep it nice and slow bow speed. So. save right to the end. So um, let's go from C. Two and three and... like really like treacle um, and really like use all your upper body um, circular motion it, it's like just it's such a great feeling so if you can get that sense of nice open but heavy open circles um, that will stand you in good stead just there okay so um, that's given us a good start um, to the Vaughan Williams um, we will continue obviously and there's the wonderful Pagamini to look forward to um, so I would just like to say that um, if you have teachers that you're working with at the moment you can take any of this um, any of the program that you will will be working with for the next three weeks do take it to teacher and see see if they can help you too um, and continue with those lessons and the other thing is that when you're doing your practice, which um, I hope um, will be happening every day, um, please do post some videos or pictures of you practicing. And you can do it on social media, you can, or, or not even social, back onto the um, website. Um, you can um, just hashtag um, uh, Benedetti Sessions and it will get to us, in fact. Um, so um, do work hard. but honestly be kind to yourself be patient with yourself um, and persevere because there will be times where you'll get frustrated but persevere and um, yeah go well thank you very much see you the next time <laughs>